Great. This is the discussion hearing for recreational fishing regulations for federal ground fish in state waters intended for consistency with federal rules in 2024 and recreational ground fish seasons, bags, and depth limits. As you know, regulatory authority for ground fish stocks is shared jointly between state and federal governments. And um, that process uh, is continuing underway with the Pacific Fishery Management Council. I would note that at its March 5th to the 11th meeting, the council is expected to recommend the in-season recreational fishing regulation changes for federally managed ground fish species and with a focus on ensuring that har harvest of quillback rockfish remains within estab established annual limits in 2024. And this is, this is independent from the two-year management cycle that is also concurrently being um, developed for the 25-26 cycle. Um, so the proposed adoption hearing is through teleconference to follow that March meeting. I wanna note that the March 14th date um, needed to be changed. And so the new adoption hearing Teleconference is March 26th, 2024. Dr. Craig Schumann will give a verbal update on the process. Please, right. Dr. Schumann. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for the introduction. So federal ground fish regulations are typically adopted on a biennial cycle and normally, whatever we consider normal, um, we wouldn't be coming to the commission in the middle of that cycle as we're in the middle of the 23-24 biennium. However, last year, a series of in-season and emergency fishing closures were needed to reduce impacts to quillback rockfish as catches under the 2023 regulations were too high. Changes are needed to 2024 sport fish regulations to keep quillback rockfish catch within federal limits this year and also to increase season opportunities that were minimal in some areas in 2023. The initial statement of reasons reflects a range of season dates and depth restrictions in each of the ground fish management areas and are intended to be complementary with fish federal regulations that will be under consideration at the upcoming Pacific Fishery Management Council meeting March 5th through 11th in Fresno. Following the council's actions, the commission will then consider those recommendations and adopt regulations for state waters at your teleconference schedules for March 26th and thank you to commission staff and commissioners for your flexibility in uh, scheduling that meeting. Uh, the initial statement of reasons has been filed is in your briefing materials and also includes some proposed changes for sport ground fish regulations for 2024 um, and beyond that include the ability to use a 20 fathom boundary, boundary line to define open and closed areas to fishing. So this is a new line um, exclusively in state waters um, that was just adopted in uh, Title 14 as part of the commercial package. A repeal of the Calcot Conservation Area that has been replaced with eight new and smaller closed areas to protect sensitive corals and sponge aggregations. Then continuing the anchoring, drifting, and transiting provisions to allow possession of groundfish aboard a vessel in areas where they cannot be taken. And the, uh, finally, the requirement for a descending device capable of returning rockfish to depth taken to be aboard any California recreational fishing vessel that is fishing or possessing groundfish. And thank you to the recreational community for the support of that. Um, what is not known at this time, but will be known by your adoption hearing, is the proposed recreational season structure, dates and depths for state waters north of 36 degrees latitude and what reduction to vermilion rockfish sub bag limit may be necessary to stay within federal harvest limits. Uh, very briefly about outreach. Uh, first, I wanna take a moment to thank and acknowledge the many groups and organizations that have sought input from their own constituents on the structure of the fishing season. I'm gonna call out Paul, who's there in the audience. Thank you, Paul, for your continued dialogue with us and for the survey that you put out there. That was extremely helpful. So thank you for all of your help. You've been um, very proactive and helpful in the discussion. So thank you. Uh, we have updated our website with the 20 fathom boundary con with the 20 fathom boundary line that includes an interactive mapping tool and a downloadable file with the GPS coordinates to use in plotting devices. 
We'll be updating and revamping our groundfish recreational regulation pages on our website, including our interactive sport fishing regulations map once the 2024 regulations have been de determined. And we're updating graphical references to the cow cod conservation area. Um, beyond the commission meeting today, where can the public engage? So written comment can be provided to the Pacific Fishery Management Council prior to the March meeting via the council website. That's pcouncil.org, and that's item F8, in-season adjustments. And the comment period closes 5 p.m. Pacific time on March 1st. Individuals can also sign up to make comments at the council, both virtually and in person. They can contact the council advisory subpanel representatives that we discussed at the last meeting. And then written comment can also be provided to the commission on the ISOR, and they can testify at the teleconference meeting on March 26th. And I will pause there. Thank you, Craig. Uh, commissioners, any, any questions? All right, Sherry, how many speakers do we have on this agenda item? We have three speakers. All right, please give them each two minutes. Okay. Our first speaker will be Grant Downey, followed by Jamie Diamond and Wayne Cotto. Grant Downey, go ahead, please. Hello, Grant Downey, uh, North Coast commercial fisherman, but also a recreational fisherman as well. Um, I'm speaking on my half as a commercial fisherman that partakes in the nearshore and deeper nearshore fishery. Um, I strongly uh, agree with the fact that recreational fishermen should be required to possess and use descending devices um, on board their vessel. And if not, it should be a ticketable offense. Um, as a commercial fisherman, the high dollar fish that we target are usually the fish that are released by recreational fishermen um, and it causes release mortality like what is estimated with the quillback fishery. Uh, moving <clears throat> recreational fishermen at the end of the year into the 20 fathom or less boundary, the high dollar fish of the China rockfish and the gopher rockfish have a high chance of having mortality if not released correctly. So I, I just, I strongly support um, implementation and requirement for descending devices. Thank you. Jamie Diamond, go ahead, please. Good morning, uh, Chair and Commissioners, staff. Uh, I am Jamie Diamond, owner of Stardust Sport Fishing and uh, manager of Santa Barbara Landing and regional vice president of the Sport Fishing Association of California. Um, I strongly support the addition of descending devices as a management tool. This is something that industry has um, offered and suggested as a management tool for quite some time. Um, we, we have deployed these on our vessels. The Sport Fishing Association distributes uh, sequelizers to our fleet yearly um, and as needed. And we also aid in outreach um, with CCA to give out descending devices to the general public. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I would love to assume that this is a yes from your side, um, and I believe it is going to be a big win um, for the resource and just helping uh, get people understanding what, what they need to do with their discard catch um, and how to be a part of the solution moving forward. Thank you. Our next speaker is Wayne Cotto. Go ahead, please. Good morning again, uh, President Murray and the uh, Commissioner Staff, Warden, CDFW, Wayne Cotto with CCA California. Uh, this has been one heck of a struggle for all of us working on the federal uh, side of the groundfish regulations, but thank you to CDFW staff for their continued efforts to try to work with us. There were unintended consequences of some of the actions that were taken at the federal level. Uh, thanks to, again, to CDFW for coming up with this 20 fathom line to try to help the inshore people get back on the water, potentially saving some of our communities up in the north. You know, the, and we have, still have an issue of Morro Bay and considered it part of that quillback area, and they're really at the tip of the southern section. Um, so we need to try to figure that piece out. <clears throat> thanks to all of us for getting the Calcott Conservation Area open after 20 years. That was a partnership with all of the groups, ENGOs, commercial, rec, CDFW staff, to get that open. That's almost 5,000 square miles open back up. 
with uh, eight high spots that will be saving for sponges and coral. So that's a good win working together of all of all the parties and opening uh, or adding the descending vices to the ground fish regulation package. Thank you, Craig and staff for helping us with that. It's been long in coming and uh, it's, it's one of those proactive steps that we can all take towards conservation efforts. So these are all positive things that we're working toward to try to fix some of our ills and issues that we have going. Thank you guys. That concludes the public speakers on this item. Thanks, Sherry. And and thanks to Wayne and, and Jamie and our other speakers. Um, really appreciate the positive frame um, of, of folks speaking on behalf of the fishing community. Um, I really see the all the work that's been done by the department. I see it too. Um, uh, to take a, a very challenging situation and try to find some some pathways forward. Really heartening and terrific to hear folks so enthusiastic about the descending devices in particular. That's something we know our neighbors to the north are using with great success. So I personally am excited to, to have some of that success here in California too. Any other thoughts from fellow commissioners? I don't see any, we don't have a motion on this. Um, so we are.